In this video, we'll introduce LC circuits. That's right, inductors, capacitors, no resistance. They're theoretical because we always know there's wire in it, never mind all the wire in the coil, but we've dealt with theoretical inductors before, and so we're dealing with a theoretical circuit that has an inductance and a capacitance to see what happens. And I also drew some uh, uh, vectors. Let's start with the vectors, because it really establishes the main point I'm trying to get across. Okay, Series circuit current is my reference. So what do we know about the voltage drop on the inductor? It leads by 90 degrees, and the capacitor lags by 90 degrees. And we use Eli, the Iceman, to help us remember that. So I put Eli, the Iceman. Eli, in an inductor, my voltage comes first, my current after. So the voltage is 90 degrees ahead. On the capacitor, voltage is 90 degrees back and the re reactances go along with it. So all we're establishing here is that I am 90 degrees leading, 90 lagging, and that makes this vector exactly opposite this vector. So when I've got 10 ohms and five ohms, or voltage numbers if I wanted those two, I simply take the bigger one minus the little one. And the formula looks like this. Whether I do it with my reactances or my reactive voltages, I get my total reactance or my reactive voltage by just going the inductive voltage minus the capacitive voltage. Inductive reactance minus capacitive reactance. Now, had the capacitor had the larger number, I would have flipped these two because I'm just looking for how much difference between them. What's the difference in length of the vectors? And the way that makes a difference to me here is that here the inductive vector is longer so I take the little capacitive vector take it away from here and I'm left with a total reactance of this amount it's pointing up into inductive territory so from the source this circuit looks inductive the capacitor just counteracts for half of the effect of the inductor, but from the source, it just sees an overall inductance, pointing in inductive territory, of five ohms, 10 minus five. So at the source, it sees a circuit that looks just, just like an inductor with five ohms. What about over here? Again, we wanna be careful with parallel circuits. Just because we know the ohm values don't jump to the gun. We gotta see what's the effect on current because remember the vectors are current. And sure enough, here I had Eli on the top, ice on the bottom. It flopped here, didn't it? Because in a parallel, voltage became my reference. So it's the capacitor that has the current leading. The inductor has the current lagging. Okay but it still creates some 180 degrees opposite. So these 10 amps are going one direction and these are going exactly opposite. I've talked in a different video what that looks like. I'll draw that picture again real quick. And it's AC current, so we catch it at one moment in time. But when the capacitor wants current in this direction, as if it were coming around clockwise in the circuit, the inductor wants it the other direction as if it were going counterclockwise. So how do those currents match up? Well, this guy's given off 10 amps this direction. Five simply go up into the inductor, the other five to the source. When the AC changes direction, source kicks in five, and this one's given back five now. Let's draw the arrows the other way. Inductor's given up five, so the circuit kicks in five to feed the capacitor 10. And that's what we get, 10 minus five, right? Just take this little vector here, take it away, and I'm left with five, a total reactive current of five amps. And what does my formula look like over here? Here I put the capacitive first because it's really the difference between the two. Capacitive current minus inductive current. 
at least to us, the way we're using it, we're looking for the difference between them.